They're cooler than dogs, I feel like. <laughs> Maybe we shouldn't post that part because I don't want to get canceled. No. This is Dr. Lasser, <laughs> our bona fide cat lady at Alicia Pet Care Center. Now, Dr. Lasser, what do you think got you that title? Well, I have two kitties and I talk about them all the time. And every time there's a kitty cat in the hospital, any age, I'm always going to go visit them, either in their kennels or when they're coming out for their treatments. I'll sometimes do a little finger wave in the windows as I'm passing by. <laughs> Probably how. <laughs> So it's the strong love for the cat. Strong love. Are you a part of any associations that are perhaps cat related? Yes, I am. <laughs> I'm part of the AAFP, the American Association of Feline Practitioners. This is a group where they provide education for veterinarians and the veterinary owners um, to help these kitties live their best life, you know, in terms of health, in terms of mental stimulation, how do we care for these guys? and. Spoil it. <laughs> what are some resources that pet parents can find on there? They can find stuff on how to enrich their environments for their feline friends. They can find, you know, is it normal for my cat to be vomiting? Why, you know, what's going on? You know, just common questions about certain diseases, about kidney disease, hyperthyroidism, things that you typically see in cats and how you treat those diseases, but kind of in a way where it's not super technical. And what are, what are some tools that you've gained through the AAFP that you use in the exam rooms with your patients? Yeah, so I did a course on there called um, a cat-friendly veterinarian course, and it shows you all the different techniques you can do uh, during your exam uh, to try to make it as a comfortable, you know, uh, as comfortable as it can be for your feline friends. So we do a lot of um, feel away, which is a pheromone, to help them stay calm. It kind of mimics mom's mammary scent. Uh, so we use a lot of that in the rooms with them. You may notice a towel when they're when they come on in that has feel away on there. And then when I come in, I'm typically talking to you guys, and I'm you'll see me unscrewing the carrier. It's very, very different, but. Um, I did learn in that um, program that kitty cats just kind of like to be in their little box. They do like these little spaces so they can kind of hide, peer out. Um, and I think personally, I try to think of it from my point of view, like if I see hands coming at me, I would probably be very scared. <laughs> so, and, and I don't like pulling them out of their carrier. It's already tough getting them in there. There's no need to pull them out. <laughs> so I typically uncap it if I can and do their exam in the box so this way, uh, they feel comfortable, they feel like they have this nice, nice little tight space to, to hide. And then I also learned the kitty cat scratching spots. So <laughs> kitty cats have some pheromone spots that are right here uh, on the temple area. They're behind the whiskers. And then my favorite part is the cheek one right there where they make their whiskers go forward and they just love it. So you may see me starting to do that after I uncap the lid and, and meet your feline friend and just start petting them and, and getting them comfortable with that with that exam. And depending on how fearful they are, now I have some brave kitties that come in um, and they'll just pop right out. They pop out like little pop tarts and they're walking around. So then I go where they're most comfortable. So sometimes these kitties are more comfortable walking around the, the exam tables and across the keyboards naturally, <laughs> or some of them just wanna go down and explore. So um, I go down with them. Dr. Lasser, what are you doing? I'm working. I said what I said. I'd rather be famous instead. If they want to go uh, walk around the room, then we hang out on the floor for a little bit and we, we get our loves and our pets and then we settle into the exam, which essentially I try to make it like a massage for them. So they're going <laughs> by, I'm just petting them, but also feeling for lumps, bumps, feeling their... Um, their lymph nodes as I'm going by and listening to their heart. You'll see me kind of chasing them on my knees sometimes because they're so curious. <laughs> but I just go with the flow with them um, and let them guide the process of the exam. I definitely did not know about like unscrewing the carriers yeah. and everything, but that totally makes sense. I'd be so scared if like these alien hands were coming yes, at me. Yes, <laughs> like, giant, just like, oh my gosh. What are some of the signs that you are looking for when you're examining a cat of what makes them more nervous versus more happy. Like more friendly versus more nervous. So yeah. the more nervous kitties tend to shrink back into themselves. Their ears will be pinned back a little bit. They're kind of trying to hide in, in plain sight, if, if that makes sense. So 
Uh, when I see these kitties, well, after I've unscrewed the carrier, I typically will go a little bit slower. I use a softer voice with them. Um, and I typically have a towel in there so they, I can slide it over them so they have a place to really be unseen. And sometimes all it takes is just hiding their head and they're like, I'm safe. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, but that would typically be a more nervous kitty, again, ears back, just kind of tucked into themselves. Uh, when you go to try to examine them, they kind of tuck into a ball a little bit. Um, and then that's the point where I'd start using my techniques like rubbing their little pheromone spots to try to make them calm and kind of pull them out of their shell and then talk with the, you know, we, we talk with the owner at that point and just kind of let them get used to hearing their parents talk with me and they, their parents' voice as that um, anchor of comfort there. And then pretty soon, most of the time, they usually come out of their little shell and say hi. <laughs> and more of a happy kitty, these kiddos pop out like a piece of toast from the toaster oven after you take that <laughs> top off and their eyes are bright and they're looking around and their ears are up and they're just very curious. The really happy ones have their tails up whereas the more nervous ones have their tails tucked and they're slinking around. Um, the more confident ones do have a bit more pep in their step and they're just up and walking around and they'll jump on the chairs and they'll, they'll just take off and go exploring on their own. So my cat, when I brought him to the vet, he popped out and um, his mouth was open. What does that mean? His like eyes were definitely alert and ears were up and then the mouth was open. Was he panting? I don't recall him panting too, but he could, definitely could have been. Okay, so sometimes panting can mean a bit stressed uh, oh. in some kitties that don't have anything else going on. Yeah. Um, so panting can definitely be a sign of stress there, which we don't want to try to avoid. However, sometimes cats will get a smell in their mouth or in their nose that they kind of like keep circulating. So they'll ha open their mouth a little bit. I don't know if you've seen those YouTube videos where they'll smell somebody's feet and they're like, <laughs> <laughs> they just have their mouth open they're like what is that they try to recognize it but um could be he caught a scent of something and he's just kind of trying to figure out what it is <laughs> yeah that's funny like a little feedback system mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> what is something that you wish more cat parents knew about their cats i want what i would like cat owners to know is that um they are very different creatures from dogs they do have very different personalities but they do have personalities some people don't think that you know cats have personalities they're like they just want to be left alone they want to do this but if you have to kind of find what they want to interact with you with um, whether it be toys whether it be food or tricks or anything they, they definitely have their own individual personalities uh, definitely not how the media portrays them a lot of the times it's just these hissing balls of fur <laughs> so um, you know if that if that happens you know you kind of have to ask yourself why am I having this trouble building this bond with my cat are they scared am I too loud um, is there something like a weird smell in the house I'm wearing too much perfume <laughs> and they're like whoa um, <laughs> or you know just uh, yeah they're very different different creatures but um, more so in terms of their health so it's not normal for anyone to chronically vomit uh, same thing with cats everyone's like oh my cat's just a, a puker and I'm like that, that's not normal <laughs> so let's figure it out let's change his food is it a food allergy is it a GI sensitivity so um, a lot of people think it's, it's very normal for their their cats to vomit and, it, and it's not uh, so I, I, I would definitely get that word out there so the two main things are cats don't chronically vomit unless if there's something wrong with them mm -hmm. and cats are special and unique and mm -hmm. they are not little dogs they're not they little are friends. dogs they're friends they're, they're very <laughs> personality yeah they have very different personalities a, a variety just like dogs and they can do tricks just like dogs sit okay good game good game oh. good boy high five good job secret handshake See, ready? Secret handshake? Ready? Good job. <laughs> Good job, baby. Okay, so now I have a little game for you. This is a game where I'm going to draw a behavior looking of a cat, and you're going to tell me how happy or unhappy the cat is. Okay. Okay. Let's go. Let's see. Okay. What is this? What is this cat's ears communicating? Those are telling me that he is a very alert cat. His ears are forward. They're at me. He's listening to me, so he's very. He seems to be comfortable. I think he's comfortable. I think he's comfy. He's is, a comfy cat. Is he comfy. Okay, good. You tell me you're yeah. the vet. <laughs> I'm just is drawing he? cat ears. <laughs> oh, the ears. <laughs> the eyes. There's lots of things that go into looking That's at kitties. That's true. It's a yeah. whole, whole, whole spectrum. Thing. So if the ears are like this, up and at you. They're they're probably pretty comfortable. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, what about... Pretty comfy. What about these cat eyes? <laughs> uh, are they like wincing at me a little bit? Would you say compared to a normal cat eye or are those normal? They're not normal. They're not the, they're not big and round, that's for okay, sure. Okay, perfect. So he's wincing a little bit, it looks like, which is telling me is there pain? Is he sick or she sick? <laughs> um, yeah, wincing's telling me something's up. Okay, great. <laughs> Hard to tell, I made forward or back? Um, still looking forward. Looking forward, so like, like forward, like spread apart or forward, like all together? <laughs> um, I feel like forward and spread apart. So forward and spread apart, I would say the cat is alert and happy. So mm, okay, never mind. They're forward and close together. Okay, <laughs> they're, they're sick. Sick. <laughs> the cat is very sick if they're forward and close together like this. Okay, got it. They're like, oh, I don't feel good. Ah, oh, that makes <laughs> sense. Okay. What is this cat communicating with mm. his ears? He's not feeling, he, he's not feeling very good. I would say he's feeling kind of sick. What would you call these ears? Droopy ears. Oh. I thought they were airplane ears. <laughs> they could be airplane ears. I could see that. I don't like flying, so that's why I don't immediately go to planes. <laughs> so that's I would so say funny. droopy ears. <laughs> droopy eared cats. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I know another thing that I want kitty uh, owners to know about their cats. Why do you want them to know? So I, I would like owners to know that their cats, uh, even though they seem well every year of their life, you know, as they're young, growing up, uh, they should get annual vet care just to establish that relationship. Your vet's going to know what's, you know, normal for them, what's not, because they're very good at hiding things, especially heart stuff, you know, lung stuff. And it's always good to chat about those kind of things that you, you notice, but don't, you know, don't think too much about because they don't do them very often, like coughing. So sometimes I'll hear that, oh, they're just coughing up a hairball. They actually don't cough up hairballs, they, they vomit them up. Uh, but the cough is 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 a bit different sounding, so could um, catch something a lot earlier. But uh, I know some owners don't bring their kitties in until they're very, you know, much the seniors, and they're like they've always been healthy, but you know they've been hiding a lot of stuff from them. So it's nice to at least build that relationship. So you know, as they get older and as they need more stuff, you you're able to trust your veterinarian and know that they got your back and their backs. Well, thank you, Dr. Lassler, for joining us and giving us all of your kitty insights. Absolutely. Um, if you want to book an appointment with her, Alicia Pet Care Center, Mission Viejo, California. <laughs> we'll be here. <laughs> uh, any final words or? Um, give your pets a big hug and a kiss for me. I love kitties, but I also love doggies too. <laughs> <laughs>